Ryan Salson here with Accelerate Marketing, and I am really excited to answer the questions that you guys have given me over the last recent few months. So if you got any questions at any time, please ask them right here on the YouTube channel itself. Okay. Next question would be, if you guys have it, hey Dex, good question. Short answer is when you schedule an estimate and it is good to use a system as much as you possibly can. And the main thing that you want to do guys is you want to keep track of what your overall return on investment is, because ultimately you want to know what your cost per job is. Okay. Cost per lead is one thing. You might have a lead cost a hundred bucks, but if it takes you five leads to convert into one job, then that's really the most important information you can get. If it takes you five leads at a hundred dollars, that's $500 to get one job. And if you're making 5,000, that's a super good investment. Thumbs up, right? Yeah. So you really want to make sure that you uh, leverage the most insight or as much insight as you possibly can to get the best result out of the local service as platform. And that means identifying not just your cost of the lead, but your cost per job so that you can identify what you're truly making. Because then you also know what your income is, that it's really easy to make decisions and spend more money. Okay. All right. Next question. Gabriel Gonzalez, do you help businesses set up a G? Yeah, we do. We do help businesses. Thank you. Set up their Google business profile. Look, if you're going to set up something as fundamental as your Google business profile page, it makes sense to set that thing up correctly in the beginning because it's with you for lifetime. It's kind of like being married. You know, you want to make sure that you, you have the right one and that you set it up right for success from the beginning. Otherwise you have a long-term relationship with that GBP and it might not be producing the way that it could or can if you actually set it up correctly from the beginning, which can mean millions of dollars over the years that you have a business. And you know, somebody that knows all the leverage to push, all the optimization to do, it makes sense to have somebody that knows how to do that stuff to do it. Spend, you know, a thousand dollars or whatever it costs. You could probably get one or two new clients and have it pay for itself. You're talking the lifetime of your business. So Great question, uh, Gabriel. Thank you. Brian Orlando. Okay. I have heard that you need to be very specific when you decline a lead and mention the reason why the client is not a valid customer. Is that correct? Okay. So this is a great question. Yeah. You want to do your best to be as specific as you can in declining leads. And when it's not a valid customer, the reason why is because it does give Google more insight into what's going on with your specific account. And it can even help them send you more of the best types of leads possible, especially now with the survey process that is, you know, quickly replacing the dispute process. So, you know, I would say be as specific as you can. And, you know, I would definitely mention the reason why a client is not a valid customer, because that's going to increase the likelihood that you get that potential dispute approved. And, and by the way, you know, I would say a healthy distribution rate would be about, you know, I'd say 10 to 20%. The survey process now is one that really is important as well. I would put as much information on that survey as you can in order to help Google find you more of the type of leads that you're looking for. You know, if you have any questions, you can always reach us or find us online at acceleratyourmarketing.com. That's acceleratyourmarketing.com. Adriano, hi, okay. Thank you for the question. What percentage of people use LSA instead of call business in Google Maps? Great question. So I think what the question is, is what percentage of people actually call up a business from local service ads versus the Google Maps? From what we've seen, it's it's increased significantly over time and it's going to increase more. This is rough estimate, but I would say about 30 to 40% of people are going to that Google local service ad section and about 30% are going to the Google business profile section. So combined, you've got about 70% of people selecting a business from one of those two sections. That's why we work on optimizing both of those two sections. Because if you're showing up in both, then you get a compounding effect. So that's why there's actually more and more people. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah, let me know what other questions we have. And again, you guys can always text us at 619-304-5155. Okay, around the clock here, okay. We just started LSA in August, have a budget of 1,000 uh, K and got three leads so far, HVAC field. Any recommendations to get more? We do respond and answer quickly. Thanks. Okay. And I know you probably think that you respond and answer quickly. It would be great to run an audit and we can, if you want, you can send us your CID. We can run an audit, a free audit. We spend about an hour or more 
to evaluate your specific LSA page and see what's going on. And we see everything from your insurance is lapsed or your verification is lapsed. There's all kinds of things that cause a business to actually not get leads that are surprising to a lot of business owners. So the other thing I would look at is what's your budget? You know, what's your bid? I would also identify how frequently are you getting reviews? Are you getting them at least one a week? I would say even two a week because HVAC is truly competitive. And by the way, if you can increase your service area and make it more of a radius, okay? A lot of times I just see people selecting cities or, or counties or whatever, and they don't really identify that true radius or around your office space that would make it so that, you know, cover more area and potentially get more leads. Every business is, is like a snowflake. Each one is unique. That's why we really run that audit in order to make sure that we see everything and, and can give you the, the best answers that we can give you. Yeah. What can I do to get more? GB? Okay. Get that link from your Google business profile page, text that link. And I was on a call today with a, a lady named Claudia and she summarized what I would say to you, which it was really great. When you serve somebody and you have what we call a reviewable moment, okay, you have a window of reciprocity, we'd like to call it. That's about an hour. So it's imperative, especially when you're in front of them, don't leave, ask them when they're there. And most of the time they'll just say, I don't even know how to do that. How do you do it? Here's my phone. And they'll, they'll ask you to actually like leave the review on their own phone. Now, the other thing I would do is I would always have that link ready in your notes of your phone so that you can copy it and text it to the person that I mentioned earlier. We call it the naked link because you know, you're naked in the sense that if somebody clicks on it, you're exposed because the person can leave you either a negative or a positive review. They go right to that review link. So I would get that naked link and I would have it ready at all times. And I would actually create an opportunity. Like if you're a realtor at the closing table, they close on the property. If you're an attorney, you know, in the office, once you hand that check to the person, that's when you've got that reviewable moment. You've got to create those opportunities really. And this is key. If you're sending out a request via email or text, it's very subtle. But what you want to do is you want to ask first if it's okay that you send the link. Don't just send the link. That's premature. Okay. That's premature review requesting. Do not do that. No premature review requesting. You need to ask for permission. It increases the likelihood that you actually will get a review by up to 30% just by asking for permission, making it a two-step process, okay? So I'm asking you now, and this is why it's so powerful to do this in person because you can accomplish that step and you can send the review request immediately. So the key is to give value, ask if you've given value. And if they say yes, if it's okay to send a review link, and if they say yes, send it and then stay on the phone with them until they leave a review. There you go. That's it. So yeah, thanks for watching everybody. Text any questions you have to 619-304-5155. Thank you. Bye-bye.